welcome back. So in today's video, we're going to take a step back and we're going to try to understand the architecture of how the system is put together. There actually is method to the madness. And once you understand how the system is laid out and, and internally how the, the entire system works as far as resources, um, services, operators, the whole concept of service-oriented architecture and how that really plays out within how the system is designed, it'll make you a lot more efficient as an operator. So let's take a look. Here we are back at the IMC home page. You guys know this, you love it, it's great. But that's not where we're going to start. We're going to go all the way across to the right and we're going to go look at the system tab because this is really the, the first place that when you first install the system you should be looking. So the system is where all the system level functions that actually pertain to the IMC NMS itself. Right, so the first section here, we've got a whole bunch of different templates. We've got SNMP, Telnet, SSH, NetConf, SOAP HTTP, PowerShell, WMI templates. Right, these are all a place for you to hold those credentials that you use to access different systems, different devices, your infrastructure, like your routers, your switches, your wireless, um, all that kind of stuff, your virtualized infrastructure, your Hyper-V servers, your VMware servers, all that is available here within the system tab. We also have device models, device categories, names, um, and vendors. So IMC, as you know, is a multi-vendor system, and we've got a lot of different models in here. Now, results, results will vary as to how much functionality is actually available for different kinds of devices. But by default, at the very least, you'll get full discovery and proper classification of 6,900-odd different devices, and that's a lot of devices. And if you go here and you look at all the usual suspects, let's do a little search here for 6509. Look at that, a whole bunch of Cisco 6509s. So yes, we do support a bunch of Cisco devices. And this includes configuration, VLAN management, all that good stuff. Right? We could look for 7708, which you may think is a Nexus, but that'll actually come up as a 3COM, an old 3COM 7708. So if we look at the word Nexus, look at this, Nexus 1000 Vs. We've got Nexus effects, the 2200s, we've got 5000s, right? We've got 7010s, 7018s, a bunch of different devices here, right? So, uh, which is a really a nice thing. That's the whole point of having a single point of glass management system is that you can bring all of your different infrastructure devices into a single box. And if you've got some really old gear out there, like the Cisco 2900 XL, I think this one actually went end of life in, oh, 2001, 2002. We still support that from a management function as well. You got, you got some fast Ethernet, we'll work with that as well. So we've also got device MIB management and things like that. Um, device registration live update for your HP products, right? We don't do device uh, up live update for non-HP products, but at least it's in there for all your HP products. So the other one we've got is operator management. And operator management, operators are the, the users that you actually log into the system with. So we can create and work with those, change their passwords. We've got operator, operator groups, and operator groups allow you to segment the services that a specific operator can access. We've also got device groups. So device groups are exactly what they sound like, a place for you to put a whole bunch of devices together. And these may make up the privilege containers that will, will figure out exactly what a given operator can do on the system. Right? what devices they can apply services to, and what services they can actually access. Right, So that's, again, the system tab. Quick overview. So the next thing we're going to look at is the resource section. And if you look here on the left, you can see all the resources on the left have changed. Right, Resource management here. We've got a whole bunch of different functions in there. System tab was different. So make sure you, you pay attention to what's happening on the left and the right-hand side of the screen. We have a bunch of different things in the resource tab and this is really a another way of looking at kind of an executive view we have custom views uh, we're gonna look at that in another video we have a whole bunch of different resources which is really it's an infrastructure device and we can get them in there by manually adding them or we can perform auto discoveries so an auto discovery can be routing based so this will use your routing protocol whether that's OSPF BGP um, ISIS EIGRP any of the above and we'll be able to, to use that and look maybe four hops away so you can you can guide you and inform your discovery we've got ARP based we've got IPsec VPN based network segment based which is really the most common as well as PPP point-to-point protocol point-to-point protocol based discoveries 
We also have IP address allocation. So we have the ability to get you away from those spreadsheets within your system, right? Um, in this particular system, I don't have this set up yet, but you can see the system default IP segment here. If we have devices in here, we would be able to query here and get a list of all the different devices. This is a fuzzy search, so you can put in a partial search. Again, I don't have this set up, so this isn't going to populate. But take a look in your system and see, see what you can see. You might uh, be pleasantly discovered that you can get rid of those spreadsheets that you're passing around. As well, historical access log. Lots of people don't turn this on. So the top right hand corner, periodically retrieve data. Once you turn that on, you will get this data. You will get the terminal MAC. So this is the host that's plugged into the network or connected to the wireless. The IP address of that host. You'll get which device they're actually logged into and which port they're logged into. And you can see over there on the right hand side, the login time and log out time. You can also query on this terminal MAC and, and really go down into one specific. So let's say for instance we want to see the people who are accessing VLAN 10. Let's take a look at that. So VLAN 10 in my case is a management VLAN. So this should be a very small number of people. right? We've got a VMware um, update manage manager server, a VMware VUM. We've got a lab DC, a, a domain controller. right? A lot of great stuff in here. So we're going to go back to the main resource page and show you guys a little bit of how you can navigate into a resource. So again, we've got routers, we've got switches, we've got servers, security devices, virtual devices, so VMware, Hyper-V, KVM, Zen, all that. As well, we've got wireless. In this case, we're going to look at an HP 830. So once we navigate into a specific device, the entire page is now going to be a focus area for all the different information and services that you can apply to this device. So you can see here, we've got an HP 830. We've got an IP address of 10.101.0.230. Uh, it's got a 24-bit subnet mask. We've got the CISO ID, the name of the box. We've got the device category, the description. We've got all the SNMP information, the system name, the syscontact, the syslocation. And scrolling down, we've got all this great fault information for this specific device. So we don't have to, to look around to figure out where, what is actually going on with this device. It's all in one specific area. Over on the right-hand side, we have actions that you can take on this specific device. So you can see here we've got some QoS deploy and again we've got all those different templates but in this case it's not a template it's actually the information being used to access this device. So the information the credentials IMC will be using. We've got for this specific specific case this is a wireless device so we've got a whole bunch of, of information from a wireless standpoint. We've got protocol information, we've got VLAN information and we can drill down into any of these and this will always be focused on this specific device right into the IP address routing table, right? The IP address table, the TCP connection. So really you can get pretty granular very quickly on this and drill down to exactly what's going on. You've got a routing issue on this box, let's look at the routing table. You want to see who's actually connected to the box? Let's look at the TCP connection table. So if you look along here in the middle, you'll see there's a whole bunch of tabs. And again, that's the beauty of the service-oriented architecture, right? You will have additional tabs as you have additional modules subscribed here. So right now we're looking at the network assets. This will show us the serial number for this specific, box, this specific box, right? So if this box was to suddenly have a power supply failure, how would you get the serial number for it? Well, you go into IMC, and that information will be right there waiting for you to fill out your RMA. So those services I was talking about, click on the services tab. These are actions that can an operator can apply to a given resource. And we have a lot of them available within IMC. Resource Automation Manager, QoS Manager, Configuration Center, VLAN Manager, MPLS VPN Management, UC Health Manager, which is for Microsoft Link or now Skype for Business, um, L2 VPN Manager, VAN SDN Manager for managing your, your HP VAN SDN controller and your SDN infrastructure, right? There's a whole bunch of stuff here. And over on the left, each one of these is actually able to um, expand and see all the functions that are available within that specific module. So if we want to go into VLAN Manager, for instance, we just expand this, and I want to go look at a specific device. Click on VLAN Devices. And this will go into a list where I've got all the devices where I could search up top right hand corner by device name. 
but I'm gonna look for a specific Cisco 3560 switch here. Click on the little gears, and I will drill, focus right in, and look at the VLAN aspects of this particular device. I could even go in here and change the VTP operation mode, right? Third-party management, critical aspect of IMC. And then I can look at all the different VLANs that are currently configured on this particular switch. I could look at the ports, um, which ports are actually as access ports or trunk ports. I could change the VLAN name. I can look at the virtual interface, so the L3 interface that's configured here. Really, really powerful stuff. So the next thing we're going to look at is alarms. No network management system would be complete without the ability to actually tell you when something wrong is happening on in your environment. So we've got the alarm browser, which is real-time alarms. These are alarms coming into your system at any point in time. Right, and you can see there's a whole bunch of different kinds of alarms in here, and depending on your environment, you could have a lot of alarms coming in. Right, so we can very easily filter this out by looking for a specific device. If you think you're having issues with your wireless, for instance, you could filter that out. One of the other things that's nice about IMC is we will actually consume syslog, we will consume SNMP traps, and built-in alarm notifications, right? These alarms sitting in the dashboard, that's not going to help you at 2 o'clock in the morning. So we have the ability here to connect to a SMTP server and being able to send out alarms to your support staff to let you know when something's going on. And we can customize this to more than one address if we want. We can say only the critical alarms or major alarms. So maybe maybe in this particular case we're looking at everything, but maybe instead you would want to look at just the critical and major um, anything after 8 o'clock on a Friday night. Reports. Everyone loves reports, right? So if I click on the My Scheduled Reports, by default there will be nothing in here because I haven't created any My Scheduled Reports. So I'm just going to prove that to you here. Look at that. Nothing. Right? So in another video, we're going to look at exactly how to set these up and how to access them. So just like the home page, the reports, this reports dashboard is per operator. This is critical when you're dealing with multiple different people on the system where not everybody wants to see the same report. So we also have quick reports. So as opposed to a scheduled report, which will capture what the system was doing at a, at a specific point in time, the quick reports, um, this allows me to go in and, and select one that I'm going to be running on a continuous basis. So if you want to know, for instance, um, about misconfigurations and you know maybe a, a device report, capacity report, device asset report, right? these can be run. Whenever you click on them, it will then be current to pretty much what the system is doing at that point in time. So from a device asset report, this is a place where you can get all your current serial numbers. Right, so if you look at here, we've actually got a Cisco 2811 at the top. So let me expand this a little bit. And you can look that this is a 2811, the IP address of it, the model, the serial number for the device and for the chassis, which of course would be the same. But other components within this router don't have the same serial number. So you can see that there is the motherboard has a different serial number, the WIC 1T, the VIC 4FXS, the 2FXO all the way down to the NM Cisco Unity Express module, and that has its own individual serial number. So again, if something goes wrong with this box, you've got this after the fact. This is all captured, and this information is in the database. One important thing to, to notice here is there may be some devices that do not have serial numbers in them. That is a function of the device. If they're not using the Entity MIB, it's not there. So that's a quick tour around the IMC system. Um, I hope this makes a little more sense to you and gives you a little idea of how to navigate. See you guys next time on the next IMC Management Tutorial.